Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We're joined by our second guest. Like I mentioned before we went on the break, is a storytelling and filmmaking day for us here on Hello Nigeria. We're joined by Lanry Olukwano, who's a manager at the IREP Film Festival. He's a documentary filmmaker, storyteller, and with over 10 years experience, today he'll be sharing with us the journey towards making a documentary and all the challenges experienced, as well as his perspective of documentary filmmaking in Nigeria. It's a delight to have you, Larry. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I'm happy to have you because I'm very interested <laughs> in documentary filmmaking. So Great. I should find out what sparked your interest in it. Yeah, well, I, I, I think there is a, the path of actuality in, in documentary film um, making really um, attracts me to, to that genre of filmmaking because, you know, you can, you can do um, feature films and people would have to, feature film thrives on people deliberately suspending disbelief. But in documentary filmmaking, it's more of actuality. You, you are telling real life story of real people, real places, real events. So it's not something that's just made up or the um, imagination of a writer or anybody. It's so if I imagine a story and I decide to shoot it, a story that could be a potential real story but of course it's not really fiction maybe a story to address one of the ills in society can't that fall under the category of documentary film i know it won't it has to be um actuality it has to be real people it has to be real experiences real places yeah um when if if all of those are not um in in, in the play then no it's, it won't it won't fall as a documentary that's you are actually documenting um, actuality, that's what you're doing. It's just that you're now putting it in a, in a narrative that people can sit back and watch in the course of maybe a, a feature length um, um, duration. Okay, reports have it that as of today, I saw on the internet that Beyonce dropped um, a docu she's dropping a documentary and Netflix has promoted it. But I want to ask, you know, people are going crazy, of course, the Beehive are going crazy about it. But here in Nigeria, do we have a culture of not just making documentaries, but actually watching and investing in documentaries? Um, I would say, um, yes, we do have that culture, but um, over, over time, it sort of slowed down, which is what IREP is really working on, and that's what we're about, and trying to reawaken that consciousness to documentary um, filmmaking and also cultivating the audience for documentary films. Um, in the last um, nine years that IREP has, has um, been having its festival, we've actually been able to um, attract a, um, sort of a new audience for documentary um, films in Nigeria. And um, um, equally worthy of note is that we've also attracted young um, filmmakers who are already making feature films. Um, we've been able to get quite a number of them to at least show some interest in documentary films. And um, um, in the last five years, yeah, I guess that, um, very some notable names in in Nigerian film industry has actually made a couple of documentary films which have screened at um, IREP, different editions. Okay, it's very interesting that there are so many um, stories that we can tell with documentaries. Right. You know, we can correct a lot of ills. I mean, today at the start of the show, I talked about how Simi has used her platform to speak against internet fraud. Do we find that there are a lot of documentaries in Nigeria that passed down, you know, those that remind us of our moral values, of our moral compass? Do we have a lot of such in Nigeria? Um, a lot, uh, well, that, that is... Um, <laughs> and if at all, are they even accepted? Because now everybody's attacking Simi for coming out to speak against internet fraud. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, um, do we have a lot? That's relative. I, uh, compared to the number of um, feature films that we have, I would say it's very, very small. Um, but are they accepted? Yes. Um, given the audience that we've been able to cultivate, given the few platforms where people have been able to show their works, I think um, if you look at the conversations that come after um, documentary film screenings, you would realize that um, people are actually very eager to um, engage the filmmakers in conversations as to why they make the kind of films they make and the, the lessons that they are able to draw from it and the experiences that the filmmakers actually explore in, in, in their work. So there is, there, is, there is an audience base that is actually yearning for documentary films. There, are, there is an audience base that is willing to accept documentary films. Um, in the case where you, you, you put 
words out or you, you try to um, talk about the social heal and you have people who come after you, I think that is to be expected because, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a free world. Everybody have their, the, the way they relate with things. So everybody won't say yes to everything you say and everybody won't say no to everything you say. So even in documentary films, there are people who will tell you um, you should not have done it that way, uh, that is not how it should have gone, but notwithstanding, um, they would have at least sort of accepted the, the story, um, see through the screening, and then you... I think if people attack it, it must mean that you're doing something right. You know, you, you, it must mean that you've touched the nerve and you're speaking some level or some degree of truth. That's what has sparked the reactions from people. So I don't think it's such a bad thing if people come I don't. I don't think it's a, it's a bad thing. I, I think um, what is important is for you to actually um, own that truth in the first place. And um, for every person that comes after you, it's also their own kind of, you know, the, the word is become so liberal these days where very true. there can be hundred versions of truth. And truth each is one, not relative. It, truth is very relative. Yeah. So um, see me, I've spoken our own truth. The people Someone bashing else, her yeah. might be holding on to their own truth uh, as well. So it's for individuals to then say, what is my own truth? And so then individuals to find their truth. Everybody have to find their truth. At the end of the truth. day, let's hope that when we find our truth, our truth will not be some sort of truth that is hurting or ripping someone else off. Let's look at IREP Film Festival. What right. are we to expect? When is it happening? Okay, the next IREP um, Festival is going to be happening in March of 2020. Um, it's always in the third week of, of um, March. It's going to be the 10th um, edition of the festival, and um, we are really excited about the possibilities of um, what's to come. Um, we are also going to be looking at the next frontier for IREP because in the last um, nine years and going into the 10th year, we have um, really worked very hard in, like I mentioned earlier, cultivating audiences for documentary film and creating awareness around the power of documentary films to, to create change. And um, we have also invested a lot in, in um, um, training and workshops for young and upcoming filmmakers and to teach them the art of documentary filmmaking. And um, so far, I look back and I'm very happy at what, you, what we have been able to achieve. And I'm not happy at what you have been able to achieve and what more you'll achieve. I'm sure that there are many people who want to be a part of the IREP Film Festival this right. year. How can they be a part of it? Um, for the next IREP, um, we would start accepting films from May. So if you have a documentary film or you have a documentary film in the works that you can be ready before next year, um, once the entry, um, entry opens, you check on our website at www.irepfilmfestival.com and then you can submit your films. All right. um, once you do that, that will be the first step. If your film gets selected, then... So thumbs up, um, filmmakers, get writing, get producing, get your team together and start to prepare for the next time that entries will open in May. So you get to have your submissions and who knows, you could get picked and get screened and from there to the world. It's been a delight to have you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.